Okay, let's take a look at how to solve some composition of trig functions with their inverses. So all of these functions today are going to be a trig function inverse of a trig function of an angle. Often when you evaluate composition of functions and their inverses, it's very easy. You just take whatever that input is as your answer. But that's not going to work here because we've restricted the range of the inverse trig function so much. So these first three examples, we have the same angle, 5 pi over 8. Let's see where that is on a unit circle. It's a good idea whenever you're doing these to draw a circle and draw in the angle. So that's about approximately 5 pi over 8. We can't say that sine inverse of sine of 5 pi over 8 is just 5 pi over 8 because our answer to any sine inverse question needs to be in the fourth or first quadrant, specifically between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. So we need to figure out which angle has the same sine value as 5 pi over 8. So if we just come straight across, reflect over the y-axis, that'll give us a point that has the same y-value. Place on the unit circle with the same y-value, we just want to figure out what is this angle here. Well, to get to 5 pi over 8, we could have started on the negative x-axis and rotated backwards 3 eighths of pi, because 5 is 3 from 8. So let's just go forward 3 pi over 8 from the positive x-axis, so we get 3 pi over 8. Tangent inverse of tangent of 5 pi over 8 is not going to be the same thing. We need to find a place in the unit circle where y over x is the same as it is at this point up here, at uh, where the angle is 5 pi over 8. We need, therefore, to be in the fourth quadrant, because tangent is negative in the second quadrant and also in the fourth quadrant. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually rotate pi radians, 180 degrees, around. So this angle here must be negative 3 pi over 8. And I figured that out by, again, saying I'm 3 pi over 8 away from the negative x-axis, so I need to back up 3 pi over 8 from the positive x-axis. What about cosine inverse of cosine of 5 pi over 8? What do we need to change there? Well, turns out nothing. Unlike sine and tangent inverse, cosine inverse is um, always going to give us an answer in the first or second quadrant. 5 pi over 8 is already in the second quadrant, so we need, don't need to change anything at all. Okay, what about this second angle? 12 pi over 7. Let's draw that in. That's going to be in the fourth quadrant, maybe about right there. And uh, sine inverse of sine of 12 pi over 7, you might think is just 12 pi over 7, because we're already in the fourth quadrant. But we need to name the angle in such a way that the angle is between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. So while we don't have to change the position on the unit circle, we're in the right place, we need to give it the right name. And the right name in this case is negative 2 pi over 7. I know that because 12 pi over 7 is just 2 sevenths away from being 14 pi over 7, which would be 2 pi, a complete revolution. How about tangent inverse of tangent of 12 pi over 7? Well, same deal. We're in the correct place. We don't need to rotate at all or reflect over the y-axis. So we just need to give it the right name, which is negative 2 pi over 7. But what about cosine inverse of cosine of 12 pi over 7? Here we do have to do something. We have to change the point because we're not in the first or second quadrant. How do we get to the right place? Well, we want to find a place on the unit circle that is the same x value. So let's go straight on up, and it must be right around there. So what is this angle here? That angle there, well, we went backwards 2 pi over 7 to get down to 12 pi over 7, so let's go forwards the same amount. So this will be positive 2 pi over 7. Okay, so that's how you solve those. Why don't you try a couple on your own here? Let's move this over. I have a few for you to try out. Try those, pause the video, try those, and then I'll come back and tell you if you have the right answer. All right, let's take a look. 6 pi over 5. Good idea to quickly sketch a circle, unit circle, and see where is that 6 pi over 5. It's just over 5 pi over 5, which is half a circle, so we're right around there. Now, we're in the third quadrant, so we do need to change the position of the point for sine inverse. 
we want to reflect over the y-axis, so we'll have the same y-value, so we need to be right there. So instead of going one-fifth of pi beyond the x-axis, we're going to come back a fifth of pi, so this should be negative pi over five. For tangent, we also need to change, but now we want to be in the first quadrant, because then tangent will be positive like it is in the third quadrant. So in this case, it'll be positive pi over five. And for cosine inverse of cosine of 6 pi over 5, again, we need to change the position because we're not in the first or second quadrant. So we'll reflect over the x-axis. That'll keep, that'll keep the x value the same. And so now instead of going one more fifth of pi from the negative x-axis, we need to back up one. So instead of 5 pi, we go back one. That would be 4 pi over 5. All right, and that's how you solve problems like this. I hope this has helped, and thanks for watching.